So in this video, what I thought I would do is uh, do an example uh, of some modular exponentiation examples. And, and this is really going to lead up to uh, a walkthrough example with some small numbers of how Diffie-Hellman works. Uh, and so uh, let's imagine we have the following uh, setup here. Let's say we have, uh, we're interested in a prime, which is we're going to set, let's say, key equal to uh, 13. And let's make uh, G, the generator, equal to 2. Uh, and obviously, in, in real life Diffie-Hellman, you would pick bigger numbers uh, than, than P equals 13 and G equals 2. Uh, but I'm picking these smaller numbers so we can do an, an actual walk-through example. So let, let's um, imagine a table here. Uh, and uh, we're going to consider uh, I. And we'll do uh, what G to the I. And then G to the I mod P. So you can kind of see how everything works. And I may just uh, maybe pick some different colors for uh, for the rows here, so it's more clear what's happening. Okay, and uh, we'll list for a bunch of values of of, uh, of i and, and, and g to the i and, and so on. Okay, and I'm gonna make the title row here, so it's a nice clean table. Okay, and excuse my my really uh, poor table art, but hopefully. Uh, you get the idea of what I am trying to do here. Um, so uh, with that, let's let's imagine. Uh, let's, let's start to draw some some raw, some <laughs> some rows here. Um, and um, I have to draw some more rows, but uh, um, this should be a good start for now. And uh, we're going to basically just walk through an example of uh, what happens when we we exponentiate. And, and I'm going to actually do the computations in, in a couple of different ways. Uh, just so you can see uh, this property that I've talked about of, uh, of modular arithmetic, where um, you know, depending on, on even if you if you modify the order in which the computations are done, you'll find that um, you can still get the the same net result. In other words, a lot of the basic arithmetic properties are preserved uh, when you are doing uh, modular arithmetic. So um, I'm going to try uh, starting from i equals let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm actually going to go all the way to 12. Let's just do, let's just go all the way to 12. So let me add a couple of more rows to this table. Yes, this is a very, a very ugly table. Hopefully, uh, you have not stopped watching the video because this table is just so terrible looking. But uh, I will try to make the, the rest of the video a bit more scintillating for you. All right, so, so let's look at now what g to the i is. And, and let's just start off, and we're not going to do anything related to modular. We're just going to compute g to the i. So when g equals 2 and, and uh, i uh, equals 1, g to the i is basically 2 to the 1, which is just 2. Um, the g to the i for, for i equals 2 is 2 squared, which is just equal to 4. And then we have uh, 2 cubed here, which is equal to 8. I'm not doing anything modular, and you'll have to see, hopefully, my prowess with powers of 2, and 2 to the 5th is basically 16 times 2, oop, 32, I don't know what that is. I think I talked about my prowess powers of 2, I made a mistake here. So 2 to the 5th is 32, 2 to the 6th is equal to uh, 64, um, and I've been in cryptography for a while, so you'll see that I actually do know my powers of 2 uh, relatively well. Um, don't ask me how far I can go in powers of 2. I can go quite far. Um, 2 to the 9th is equal to 512. Uh, 2 to the 10th is 1,024. 10. 2 to the 11th is equal to 2,048. And 2 to the 12th is equal to 4,096. All right. Now let's look at what these things are mod p. Now I'm going to show you, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll do some trickery here, and I'm going to show you two ways to make the same computation. You can verify these; will give you the same result. I won't, you know, do it all the way through because I think it'll give you tedious, but you'll see. So um, now two mod thirteen. This is two because two is is less than or equal to twelve, and so it's, it's two is in fact smaller, it's strictly smaller than thirteen. And if so, you don't have to actually do any kind of modular reduction. Uh, 2 squared is 4, and so 4 mod 13 is, is just 4. Uh, 8 mod 13 is, is going to be 8. Now, 16 mod 13 is the first interesting case you get. That's actually going to be 16 minus 13, which is 3. 
right? Because now we're finally going to be wrapping around. We've actually, you know, kind of gone around and, and uh, uh, just, just for illustrative purposes, I'm going to just kind of draw it out here. So imagine you're one, uh, two, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Well, so I'm going to kind of barely made this clock work. Um, but if you think about it, um, you know, with this particular clock, and let me kind of draw it a bit nicer, you know, if I were to um, actually go around this clock um, and I was trying to count to 16, and I would get to 12, right? And this, would be, this would be where 13 is. This would be where 14 is. This would be where 15 is. And this would be where 16 is. And so you can immediately see that Yes, indeed, uh, 2 to the 4th, or 16, or 16 mod 13 is equal to 3. So we're going to take a look at 3. How about 32 mod 13? So there's, there's a couple of ways we can do it. Um, one of the first things I want to tell you is that, you know, all I'm doing between these operations, I'm basically just multiplying by 2 as I go across. And then it turns out that I can keep this up, and, and um, I can, in fact, um, just by looking at the previous one, I know that, that uh, 2 to the 4th mod 13 is equal to 3. So 2 to the 5th mod 13 would just be equal to 3 times 2 or 6, but let's actually verify that directly. If I were to take 32, okay, and I were to divide 13 into 32, well, what am I going to get? So you get 26 and 6, you get a remainder of 6. So you can immediately see that um, these match up. And so even though I did the computation by just directly doing remainder, uh, versus actually using the previous result, I got the same result at the end. And, and again, these are the kinds of things that if you want to really understand math, um, sometimes it's just helpful to pause in places like this and kind of work things out for yourself and, and see how well you understand things. Now, uh, similarly, 2 to the, 60, two to the 6th, um, we know that's 64, and I can actually figure that out by just uh, multiplying the previous result by 2. So 6 times 2 is 12. Okay, and we can also, let's just verify that um, what would happen if we did uh, 13 divided by 64. Okay, well, uh, you can see, imagine to put a, a 4 here. So you get uh, 4 times 3 is 12, and you get 4, and you get 52, and you get 12 left, and now that means it's 4 remainder 12. And so the remainder is 12 in this case, and then again, you see that's consistent. I just doubled the previous result, but I could also, if I just had done it directly, I've wound up in the same thing. And, and let me just tell you the rest of the numbers. It's going to be 11 for, uh, for uh, 2 to the 7th um, because I'm going to double it. I'm going to get 24 when I do uh, 12 times 2. And then uh, to reduce that mod 13, I'm just going to subtract 13 from that. So And, and you'll notice that I get 12 times 2, which gives me 24. And then 24 minus 13. 13 would give me 11. And so I ended up with having an 11 here. Okay, and then I'm going to do this again. So 11 times 2 is, is going to be 22. And uh, so 11 times 2, because I'm multiplying the previous result, it gives me 22. And then 22 minus 13, well, that's just going to be equal to 9. Okay? Okay, 9 times 2 is 18. 18 minus 13 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. Uh, ten, I don't need to reduce that anymore because it's, it's a number between 0 and 12. 10 times 2 is 20. 20 minus 13 is 7. And then 7 times 2 is 14. And then 14 minus 13 is 1. So you'll notice, uh, quite interestingly enough, when I got to 12, that g to the 12th is, is equal to 1. It turns out this is true in general. If you have any type of um, a group modulo p, then uh, g to the p minus 1 for any generator g will always be equal to, to 1. And that's... that's um, uh, a well-known idea in uh, in number theory, but uh, you know I won't uh, go into the details here. But just uh, suffice to say, it's, it's called Fermat's little theorem. Um, just as so an FYI, but uh, maybe I'll do a future video where I talk about some more properties of modular arithmetic. For now, I uh, just kind of take that at face value. Okay. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to kind of repeat uh, this process. I'm also going to look at some powers of of uh, two. And this is actually going to come in handy later on, and, and I'll kind of explain. Uh, why I'm doing it. It turns out that this is something that we can actually use for being able to do um, modular exponentiation faster. And there's a trick known as repeated squaring, which allows you to compute exponentiation or exponents or 
a lot it allows you to exponentiate really fast um, and well let me, let's talk about that uh, in a bit but uh, it turns out you need to basically use repeated squaring as a way or a mechanism for implementing Diffie Hellman and similar protocols efficiently and so what I'm going to actually look at are the following things I'm going to look at what is um, two so I'll start with two squared and we're going to do these all these things mod 13 um, and uh, again, let me actually make a nice table for you here. Let's see if I can get this table big enough. I'm going to have the table, uh, and in this particular case, I'll have a table with um, with five rows. Row one, row two, row three. Divide this in half, and I should have exactly five rows, so two squared, um, and then two to the two squared, uh, two to the two cubed, and, that, and I'll explain uh, in the next video why I'm even interested in, in these particular values and these particular powers of two um, mod p. Um, but basically, the, the, suffice to say, what they really allow you to do is it allows you to actually short circuit a lot of modular exponentiation. In terms of if you just know these values, you can solve, you can really come up with, uh, really, you can, you can address any modular exponentiation problem pretty quickly um, just by multiplying these particular values together. Uh, so, what is, what is 2 squared mod 13? So, 2 squared is just 4, uh, and 4 mod 13 is 4. Now, about 2 to the 2 squared, this actually turns out to be. Um, all I'm doing, it turns out, is I'm just squaring this previous value. So this is going to be equal to 4 squared, which is 16. Um, and uh, 16 um, mod 13 is actually just basically 3 mod 13. Okay, and then I'm going to square again. So 3 squared is basically equal to 9. So I get 9. Um, and then 9 squared is equal to 81. Uh, 81 actually is just times to be 12 mod 13. Uh, and then uh, 12 squared, we know is 144, and 144 turns out to be 11 uh, mod 13. Now the key point I just want to kind of reemphasize here so you, you're more clear on what I was doing, um, since it might have seemed a little bit confusing, I'm, I'm sure it was a bit. Um, you know, if I want to go from any row in this to any other row, you know, all I'm really doing is I'm taking the previous row and effectively squaring that. So if you think about it, you know, what is 2 squared squared? That's basically 2 squared times 2 squared, which in this case is basically equal to um, 2 to the 2 squared, right? Because I'm going to multiply these together, and you can see that's, that's, uh, that's true. Now what about if I took 2... Um, to the 2 squared and multiply then square that, what would I get? Well, let's look at that for a moment. So 2 to the 2 squared squared is uh, 2 to the 2 squared times 2 to the 2 squared, right? Which is basically um, 2 to the, and I'm going to basically have to add the exponents, so that's 2 to the um, 2 times 2 squared. And what is 2 times 2 squared? That's just equal to 2 cubed, right? So I'm basically here going to get 2 to the 2 cubed. And so really, 2 to the 2 squared squared is equal to 2 to the 2 cubed. And you'll notice, lo and behold, that these match up. You see, I basically do have a, a nice match here. Now, let, let's try this for one more example before you can convince yourself this is true. Uh, what is 2 to the 2 cubed squared? So 2 to the 2 cubed squared, that's equal to, um, and I'm going to put some more parentheses so it's more clear what I'm doing here. That's basically 2 to the 2 cubed times 2 to the 2 cubed, which is equal to 2 to the 2 times 2 cubed. And I get that because I'm when, when I multiply um, two exponents with a common base, I have to add the exponents together. And so at 2 to the 2 times 2 cubed, well, that's just basically 2 times 2 to the 4th. Because I just took the 2 here, and, and when I multiply 2 times 2 cubed, I get 2 to the 4th, because 
Um, all this is is basically two to the one times two cubed, which is two to the fourth, because I'm just basically adding extra power of, of I'm basically multiplying by two one more time, so I have to add one to the power, um, and uh, or add one to the exponent. And uh, and again, you can kind of see that this is, uh, uh, it's no coincidence. This actually matches what's in the next row right here. Uh, and just to kind of complete things off before I end this video, let me go ahead and actually even tell you uh, two to the um, Let's look at what happens when I do two to the two to the fourth and square that. Uh, and you should expect that you will see two to the two to the fifth. Um, and you can, you can verify that directly if you want to just watch me verify it as well. So you get two to the two to the fourth times two to the two to the fourth, which is equal to um, two to the two times to the fourth, which is just equal to two to the fifth. Oh, sorry, two to the two to the fifth here. Fix that. And again, you get a match between that and that. All right, so um, I just did this as an example of doing some uh, some modular exponentiations, modulo uh, a prime, in this place the prime was 13. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to use, I guess, some of this, this pre-work that I've done to actually show you a numerical example of Diffie-Hellman being carried out. Thanks a lot, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.